Yo, 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 genius, it's your girl Raven Channel in the Omen. Just want to give you a big shout out here from the UK. Um, and Ring IQ. Uh, you're the man. Thanks so much for your support. Welcome to the mother relay we're covering today's top boxing news Ow! okay we'll start with this it's official alicia Baumgartner has been approved to fight for undisputed crown Hyunmi Choi was named a champion in recess by way of the wba the WBA who ordered the fight between them, between the two remaining champions at Super Featherweight, Alicia Baumgartner vowed that her next fight would be for the Undisputed Championship. The WBA has granted that wish, even though it will come without its own champion involved in the process. BoxingScene.com has confirmed that every major title in the junior lightweight division will be at stake for Baumgartner's next fight. The reigning lineal WBC, IBF, WBO, and IBO champion was approved to challenge for the now vacant WBA title as long-reigning claimant Hyunmi Choi was downgraded to a champion in recess due to her current declared injury status. Nobody really believes that Hyunmi Choi is injured, but she must have provided some documentation, falsified or otherwise, if she retains champion in recess status by way of the WBA. Based upon the championship's rules and the finding of the WBA Medical Committee, the WBA places Ms. Hyunmi Choi as a champion champion in recess of the WBA World Female Super Featherweight Division for a period no longer than the date of the medical clearance referred to below. The WBA declared earlier this week in a final resolution, a copy of which was obtained by BoxingScene.com, Ms. Baumgartner will be allowed to contend for the vacant WBA title against the next leading available contender ranked by the WBA for about to take place no later than March 31st, 2023. An opponent is expected to be finalized and revealed in the coming days. The two highest ranked challengers are Germany's own Ramona Graef and former WBC lightweight titleist Delphine Persoon of Belgium. Yunmi Choi must have provided them with some kind of documentation because if she hadn't, she would have been stripped outright, at least in theory. The ruling comes more than a week after the previously ordered Baumgartner versus Choi was bound for a purse bid hearing during the WBA Centennial Convention in Orlando, Florida. The bout was pulled from the session after Choi, whose family defected from North Korea in 2004 and eventually made their way to Seoul, South Korea, filed for a medical exception, declaring that she was unavailable to face Baumgartner by the sanctioning body's deadline. Choi's case was presented to the WBA Board of Directors who spent more than a week deliberating over the matter before reaching its decision. The ruling ends what was the sport's longest active title reign up until that point. It is true that Hyun Mi Choi was the longest active reigning champion in the sport, but that's mostly because the woman barely fights. She's been fighting once a year for approximately five years. Once a year for the last five years, and when she does fight, it's not against anybody good, not against anybody who's a credible threat to what was her world title reign. On the submission of approval of medical clearance that the champion in recess is fit to fight, Ms. Choi will be named the mandatory for the holder of the WBA Unified Super Featherweight Division title. This is what I told you was going to happen. This is what I told you would transpire. And what I expect to see next is that Hume Choi is going to wait for the coast to clear. She's going to wait for the winner of Bount Gartner versus whoever. Whether it's Ramona Gray, Fidelphine Pissoon, she's going to wait for the winner of that fight to emerge. If the winner is Alicia. Alicia's plan is to become this division's undisputed champion, then subsequently move up in weight, at which point all of those alphabet titles would become vacant. So long as Hyun Mi Choi holds that position as the WBA's champion in recess and mandatory challenger, she can fight for the title as soon as the title becomes vacant. I don't think she has any intention of facing the winner of Baumgartner versus to be announced, whether it's Ramona Grafe or Delphine Pursuit. I think what she's really waiting for is for Alicia to emerge the victor. She's gonna stay away. She's gonna let the winner of that fight emerge. And if the winner is Alicia, and Alicia moves up in weight, drops all of those belts, that's when she'll come back. She has no intention of facing the winner of that fight, whether it's Alicia Baumgartner or somebody else. The question then becomes who that somebody else is going to be. Germany's own Ramona Grafe, an unbeaten up-and-comer that's flying relatively low on the radar, sporting a professional record of four wins, no losses, and no draws with no recorded knockouts. She's the WBA's gold champion. A fight with Alicia and Ramona, whilst being for undisputed, wouldn't have the same profile as a fight between Alicia and Delphine. Former WBC 
UFC lightweight champion Delphine Pissoon, who a little over a week ago was set to have rejected an offer to face Michaela Mayer. Which was a little hard to believe at first because I don't think Delphine Pissoon is running scared from Michaela Mayer. But what if the reason she rejected an offer to face Michaela Mayer is because she already had a better deal on the table for Undisputed opposite the ring, Alicia Baumgartner. It's a scenario that we have to entertain because a fight between Baumgartner and Pursoon certainly has more of a profile than Baumgartner versus Grave. God bless her. Nobody knows Ramona Grave. And Alicia's next fight is intended to be the co-main event to the main event, what's supposed to be the undisputed featherweight title fight between Amanda Serrano and Eric Cruz, set to go down in February in a tri-state area, New York City. It's supposed to be two undisputed title fights on that card. The super featherweight undisputed title fight and the featherweight undisputed title fight. Baumgartner versus Pursoon is a lot easier to sell than Baumgartner versus Ramona Grafe. I reiterate, even with the renaissance of women's boxing we've been seeing the last three or four years, nobody knows Ramona Grafe. You also have to wonder how the Grafe people feel about this. Do they want this fight or will they deem it too much too soon for the 4-0 fighter. The Pursoon fight is the more marketable fight, and Delphine Pursoon, by all accounts, is the more formidable fighter, but Ramona Grafe is ranked ahead of her, and she's WBA gold champion. So it's going to be interesting to see how all of this works out. In men's heavyweight news, Dillian White had this to say. He says, Deontay Wilder is a cowardly con man. Biggest fraud in all of sport. Dillian White is now coming off his... Decision win over then unbeaten Jermaine Franklin, contentious in some circles, some, though not all. Having officially rebounded off the knockout loss to Tyson Fury, the body snatcher is apparently still seething at the fact this guy is an actor, White told Sports Mail. Everything he does is an act. Even fake crying at the press conference after he knocked out Robert Hellenius, I was just like, you make me sick, you piece of shit. I heard that Wilder still doesn't want to fight me. He's the biggest fraud in all of sport. Never mind boxing. Who doesn't fight his number one contender for four years and then claims he's the greatest of all time? He hasn't actually beaten anyone of note yet. He is just the cowardly con man. White's braggadocio and confidence are still operating at peak levels, even after suffering a knockout loss in his most... Deontay Wilder cried? In the post-fight press conference for the Robert Hellenius fight he did, an Oscar-worthy performance, in Dillian White's opinion... How much that man gonna suffer? He may be all right right now, a little bit, but what about the next day? What about two weeks from now? What about a month from now? Maybe years from now? And we seeing what happened. Look at look at look at Cologne. Talking look about he Richard got Cologne. Hit. Richard Cologne. That's Richard Cologne. Yeah, correct. This man ain't have no kids. <laughs> Man, they don't understand, man. Y'all don't fucking understand what we go through, man. And I don't even know him like that. But I always be an advocate for us because ah, Take your time. Take your time, man. this man would never know what it feel like to be somebody's father. And that's some of the precious thing in the world to be somebody's father. But he'll never be nobody's father, man. This man will never have a natural childhood ability of, 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 of living again because of he got in the ring to support his family. But now, his family got to take care of him for the rest of his life. He, might, he probably would have been, he probably would have the breadwinner of his family. And now they looking, seeking for help and shit like that. I can say so much about it. Dillian White's not buying it. He views these words from Deontay Wilder post-fight after the Hellenius fight, the concern that he is now expressing right. for his fellow pugilists as being hollow. It's rehearsed. It's fake, and Deontay Wilder, he's a phony. I have to admit that I think that Dillian White makes a very valid point because this expressed concern for his fellow pugilists and compatriots is coming from the same guy who not that long ago, on repeat, used to say that he wanted to catch a body in a ring, i.e. he would have liked to have killed a man. How many times did you hear Deontay Wilder say that leading up to the Dominic Brazil fight? Hell, how many times did you hear him say that before he even fought Dominic Brazil? Before it even became came about fighting Dominic Brazil. Deion
John Tay Wilder was on record on more than one occasion saying that he would like to catch a body in the ring. So he can turn around now with this Oscar-worthy performance expressing concern for his fellow pugilists. It all does come off as very rehearsed, very staged, hollow. Is it possible that in suffering two systematic beatings at the hands of Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder has changed his perspective? It's possible he changed his mind. Getting his ass kicked the way that he did might have had a lot to do with why he changed his mind. It's possible he changed his mind. People do it all the time. Whether he changed his mind or he didn't change his mind, given what he's said in the past, his tearful plea comes off as very disingenuous. It's very hard to convince people that you're this concerned with your fellow pugilists when you're the same guy who not that long ago used to say you'd like to kill one of them. Can't be all that concerned with their safety and well-being when you're the guy that used to run around saying that. Dillian White isn't buying Deontay Wilder's Sally Struthers routine. Dillian White, who said he'd fight him for half the money, him being Anthony Joshua. Over Deontay Wilder, really? That's what Dillian White said. His rumored next fight is a rematch with Anthony Joshua. AJ knocked White out back in 2015, and White holds claim to a victory himself, albeit in the amateurs. Oh. It's these fights, White told Fight Hype, that put Joshua at the top of his list. I want to fight Joshua because me and him have history. If they paid me a hundred million to fight Wilder and fifty to fight Joshua, I'd fight Joshua. We've got history, bro. It's mad and it's going to be a mad fight. We already saw Joshua versus White. In truth, if I had to choose, I'd rather see Dillian White versus Deontay Wilder than Dillian White versus Anthony Joshua in a rematch. I don't actually think that should be Anthony Joshua's next fight, and I think it sends the wrong message. Going back and fighting a guy that you already beat, that you already knocked out something like six or seven years ago, what does that prove? I'll tell you what it proves. It proves you're unsure of yourself and you're playing it safe, revisiting your old stomping grounds, fighting a guy you know you can beat because you beat him before. I don't think Dillian White should be Anthony's next fight. And I hope that he isn't. In truth, I could really go for Dillian White versus Deontay Wilder because it still feels like they have unfinished business. For a long time, Dillian White sat atop the WBC's rank standings, but Deontay, he never got around to fighting him. And as you can see, Dillian White, he's still raw about that. He's got some choice words for Deontay. I'd like to see Deontay in there with some new blood. Deontay, who's rumored to be facing his PBC stablemate and former unified heavyweight champion, Andy Ruiz. The WBC ordered the fight between the former champion at their recent convention. But I don't think Wilder versus Ruiz is a bigger fight than Wilder versus White. Andy Ruiz has appeared on pay-per-view two times since dropping a lopsided decision to Anthony Joshua. And both times, the pay-per-view buys were abysmal. Next to nobody, Bought those fights. Deontay Wilder himself very recently made his big comeback, his big ring return, and the same applies to him. Next to nobody bought his fight. You could argue that a fight between Deontay and Andy would do better. Yeah, it might sell better, but not that much better. I think Wilder versus White in the United Kingdom gets a bigger, better reception in the United Kingdom than Wilder versus Ruiz in the United States. But Deontay Wilder's handlers are idiots. There's money to be made in the United Kingdom. There's money to be made in world boxing, but they want to stay local. Wilder versus Ruiz isn't a bad fight, it's just not a bigger fight than a white fight could be, because it would be unexpected. Those UK fans would show up and show out if the bronze bomber landed in the United Kingdom to finally take on Dillian White. They've both been knocked out before, which puts them on more or less even terrain. They've got their pros, they've got their cons. They've both got their virtues and their drawbacks, which creates an air of spontaneity that makes the fight attractive, though ultimately, I don't expect Wilder to do this. Reality oftentimes is more mundane than we would like it to be. It would be a deviation from the norm to see Wilder travel and make a big fight. But that's not what's gonna happen. That's not what's gonna go down, and we all know it. He's gonna fight Andy Ruiz. Uh, what's up, baby? Your day three. The first day, how much cold? Hey, how? First day, how many rounds? 18. 18 round first. 21. 21 in second. 25. 25 the third day. Yeah. Shit. Hey. This what it take, man. If it ain't hard work, then I don't want it. It take a lot of dedication and hard work, a lot of discipline. 
a lot of motivation, a lot of bravery, a peaceful mind, a happy place, visualization, meditation, all those elements combined together. Man. It appears that Deontay Wilde is back in camp, getting ready for a fight, presumably the Andy Ruiz fight, which at this point would be the easiest fight to make. There was an interest in... There was an expressed interest in doing an Usyk fight, but we know Usyk's fighting Fury. There was an expressed interest in a Joshua fight, but Joshua's gonna have a rebound fight first. If Deontay Wilde is already back in camp, it would have to be for the Andy Ruiz fight, which was ordered by the WBC to crown their next mandatory challenger for the winner of Fury versus Usyk. If Deontay Wilder wins this fight, he gets fast-tracked to a world title shot, a world title opportunity for all the marbles, all the belts, whether Fury wins or Usyk wins. Though if Fury wins, I hardly think his team are going to put him in there with that same guy for a fourth time. Though I will admit, it's also hard to imagine he'd fight Oleksandr Usyk when comparatively a Joshua fight a transatlantic Anthony Joshua showdown pays out more money, more cash than an Usyk fight, even if it is for all the belts, all the marbles. And if you're Deontay Wilder, you're coming up on 40 years old. You're not that far off. What do you want to do? As stated, Wilder versus Ruiz, it's not a bad fight, though commercially, in this climate, I don't know how well it's going to do. The real virtue of a Ruiz fight, I'd say, is the opportunity to knock out a guy that... Andy Joshua didn't knock out, really. Andy's never been knocked out. Andy Ruiz, who's coming off his points decision win over Luis Ortiz, a common opponent between him and Deontay. The real value of sharing the ring with Andy is the opportunity to knock out a guy that Anthony didn't knock out. Because that, in effect, helps to build the Joshua fight if the Deontay Wilder people are now serious about pursuing it. Now, a lot of people feel that Deontay Wilder can knock out Andy Ruiz, who's got fast hands, mid-range to inside, and some power, good combination punching. He's got fast hands in close quarters, but inside or outside, he's got slow feet. That's his Achilles heel. He's got to get mid-range to inside before that hand speed and those combinations. Before they even come into it, Deontay Wilder being the taller, longer fighter doesn't need to be up close to Andy to touch him with shots, touch him with punches, though he has to be careful. Because Andy Ruiz is a counter puncher. It is an intriguing fight, though I reiterate, I don't know how big that fight is in this climate. Commercially, at the box office, I don't know how well it does. Both guys sold next to nothing their last outings, and granted that together, they might do a little better. The bar is exceptionally low these days for the both of them. In any event, this is what I always expected to happen. I believe that Andy is next.